be honest. Have you ever sat there looking at a horse and thought to yourself, why am I smarter than you, horse? Why can my kind build incredible things while you just stand there in a field eating grass? Why do we get to ride you and not the other way around? How did humans become so much more intelligent than you and everything else? Well, it turns out that one of the reasons, and I'm not joking about this, is memes. And we'll prove it as we explore how humans became intelligent. Starting at 6. The Brain You cannot separate the emergence of human intelligence from the brain. Our chunk of bone-wrapped gray matter is nearly double that of mammals with a similar body size, and over the past 7 million years our brains have grown three times bigger, with much of this occurring in the past 2 million years alone. But our brains weren't simply cultivating mass. They were growing in certain areas to give us an advantage over other species. Our early ancestors saw their neocortexes expand, and while this part of the brain was originally devoted to processing visual information, we now use it to form language, emotions, and a sense of self as well. Later developments saw our brains improve their ability to solve problems, plan ahead, and work with others. But why did this happen? What caused our brains to start growing so much larger than our rival primates? At 5. Brains over Brawn The brain consumes more energy than any other tissue of equivalent size in the human body. If it were a random process on Task Manager, you'd shut down this resource-hogging software in a second. But curiously, overall, human beings burn roughly the same amount of calories as primates of similar size. So how does our body cope with this huge brain drain? In 1995, Leslie Aiello and Peter Wheeler speculated that human bodies started diverting energy away from other processes to fuel our burgeoning brains. One place we humans are lacking in comparison to primates is muscle mass. Check out this ripped fella for example. He'd take your girl, your mom, and your heart with a single flex of his pecs. So, in exchange for being hunky monkeys, humans became smart instead. But what prompted this change? 4. Why so smart? For human brains to grow and intelligence to develop, there had to be an evolutionary cause or reason behind this change. So what was it? Harvard biological anthropologist Richard Wrangham theorizes that the discovery of fire enabled us to boost our calorific intake by using it to cook meat. Cooked meat digests much easier and releases more calories. And more calories means more energy for brain growth. This has the knock-on effect of giving you more time to think, create, and explore. As opposed to our rivals, who had to spend all day foraging for low-calorie fruits and vegetables. Another theory links brain growth to bipedal movement. Scientists previously believed that walking on two limbs came as a result of our brain's development. Now, some think the opposite may be true. Humans became bipedal first, and the new way of moving forced the female birth canal to morph into a new shape. This new baby-making chamber allowed for the evolution of soft skulls in babies. And, in turn, this meant that baby brains could continue growing for two years after birth. How bipedal movement, or indeed the discovery of fire, came about is uncertain. Both of these could have arisen from a random occurrence, because the reality is, human supersmarts might be the result of a simple mistake. Number 3. Evolutionary Error Evolution can occur as either microevolution, which involves tiny changes over a long time, or macroevolution, whereby huge, sudden changes occur very quickly. The former could easily be the main reason for humans being so intelligent, with lots of little advancements coming as a result of brain-boosting behaviors such as cooking and bipedal movement. But it's also possible that one genetic freak may have been born with superintelligence, possibly mitochondrial Eve, 
And it was this mutation which later spread to the entire human race. One such mutation may have been the duplication of the gene SRGAP2, a gene literally called the humanity switch, and is responsible for the rapid evolution of the human neocortex. So, was the evolution of human intelligence a complete mistake? Was it destined to happen? Or was this gene deliberately placed in our DNA somehow? Number 2. No more crazy. Psychologist Julian Jaynes was fascinated by how human consciousness came to exist. We are not only smarter than animals, we are also more self-aware. So how did this happen? How did ancient humans become conscious? Mr. Jaynes says they weren't conscious. And until recently, we were a race of schizophrenics. He theorizes that the brains of early man functioned as two separate entities, with the left side performing everyday tasks and the right side collating memories and experiences. Modern human brains are connected between the two hemispheres, but in the past, Jaynes says they were mostly split. We say mostly because Jaynes thinks they might have been connected through one now redundant part of our brain's language region. He believes this rudimentary bridge between our hemispheres would have caused early man to hear noise hallucinations, and that our early culture was derived from the shared discussion of what these voices meant. He even asserts that these sounds were responsible for the creation of gods and religion, and that the fully linked brain was only established in recent human history, after complex societies began to form. And this leads us to the entry you've all been waiting for. At number one, memes. The social brain hypothesis states that human intelligence arose to help us survive in large and complicated social groups. Ideas like charity, friendship, enemies, and language were invented by random pockets of individuals trying to make their way in the world. But how were these concepts made ubiquitous across human society? Why do we all act in mostly the same ways? You guessed it, the meme. The word meme doesn't just describe a mass shared image on the internet. It was actually a term coined by Mrs. Garrison's one-time lover, Richard Dawkins. Dawkins used this term to refer to any idea which can be culturally transmitted and which changes over time. Anything from musical melodies and cooking through to social customs and new ways of jacking it can be considered memes, since they've all been generated, spread, and refined throughout mankind. Our brain's ability to process communication plays a fundamental role in this, as once we were able to share experiences and ideas with others, our society underwent something called memetic evolution. Memes spread throughout small populations of people like a virus, and eventually the ones which were most useful to human beings established themselves. This obviously helped the spread of technologies and ideas, but it may have also helped facilitate the development of consciousness. Certain aspects of your awareness are undoubtedly genetically transmitted, but many questions about the human self and our experiences arise from the sharing of thoughts and philosophies. Without this, we wouldn't even have the concept of consciousness in the first place. And so there you have it. Humans aren't special after all. The gap between us and animals is not as great as you or most people perceive it to be. And we've investigated just how big of a threat this is in our bonus video, Humans Aren't Special, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this, and indeed all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool, we still love you, and we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll find out by watching our recent video, which asks if we can create consciousness.